Hallelujah. Jesus, we magnify you tonight with our hearts and with our words. Let's magnify him together, church. Jesus, we lift you up. We magnify you in your house tonight. Throughout all of eternity, our song will be Jesus. Your redeeming blood, your redeeming love, hallelujah. You snatched us out. You snatched us out from the kingdom of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of life. Jesus, we magnify you. Jesus, we magnify you. You're worthy of our hearts, Lord. You're worthy of our attention. You're, you're worthy of our thoughts. You're worthy of our lives. You're worthy of our affection. And we love you. We magnify you. In your house tonight, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Are you redeemed tonight? There's a scripture in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 4 that while we were singing these songs, it reminded me of it. And we, we talk about the love of God and the goodness of God. And, and Pastor has really uh, been ministering these truths to us these last few weeks. It's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance, right? It's not the judgment of God. It's not the wrath of God. It's the goodness of God that not only leads us to repentance when we were lost and undone and on our way to hell, but can I tell you to this day, it's the goodness of God that leads me to repentance. It's the goodness of God that continues to lead us to repentance, to have a change of mind and go a different way and to go his way. He's always pulling us. He's always drawing us. And Ephesians 2 and verse 4 in the Amplified, it says, But God. <laughs> Some of my favorite words in the Bible, but God. But God, in order to satisfy the great and intense love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our sins, he quickened us. And he made us alive in Christ Jesus. Can I tell you that God's already done something? Come on. We're not waiting on him to show us something. He's already done something. And he did that through the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's magnify him one more time. Hallelujah. Uh, Jesus, we honor you. We honor you. We magnify you. You are our, you're our Lord. You're our Savior. You're our healer. You're our deliverer. You are our blesser. You came to give us life and life more abundantly. And we say thank you, Lord. We say thank you, Lord. We say thank you. Be honored. Be magnified in your house tonight and have your way. And have your way, Lord, and have your way. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. You can be seated. If you're happy and you know it and you're happy to be in God's house, say amen. amen. Or, or clap your hands. I like that too. Clap your hands. Yeah. Man. What did you say, Pastor. Rub your nose. Okay, rub your nose. Don't, you know, rub your neighbor's nose. Whatever. Um, isn't it good? Oh, my goodness. How many of y'all were looking forward to coming to church tonight? Isn't it good to meet together um, in the presence of the Lord and with other believers? Amen. I'm going to have to get going or you know I'm going to want to preach. So, I have a few announcements. Uh, y'all bear with me for some announcements tonight. I think you're going to like these, all right? All right, so if you're new here, uh, I just want to say welcome. If you're new online and you're visiting us uh, uh, via online, we just say welcome. Glad that you're here with us. And you can get in touch with one of us in the office by texting that uh, number right up there. 
479-551-5111. And I'm going to make a plug right here also that if you want to be a part of our messaging system, that um, how many of you already are? Yeah, so a lot of us, but if you're not already and you would like to be a part of it to receive messages from the church, messages like our, um, our newsletter, our weekly devotionals. How many are getting weekly devotionals? Are you enjoying them? Yeah, it's all right. Okay, uh, praise the Lord. <clears throat> And, and we would get information to you, just church news, if, you know, inclement weather or anything like that. This is how we would communicate. So if you want to be a part of the messaging system, if you will uh, type news, N-E-W-S, to that number right there, then you, hello, you'll be able to opt in, and you can opt out at any time. Sounds good? All right. All right, and so the next one, just a reminder of the men's skeet shoot this Saturday. Men, if you have not registered, signed up for this already, you still have time to do so. You need to go online, or the ladies at our Connection Center will help you. Got it? Got it. All right, our next one, Alma Community Center. We are serving at the Alma Community Center this week. We still have two more days, tomorrow and Saturday. We serve from 9 a.m. until noon. And if you're able to do that, if you will text outreach to that number, then Kylie will reach out to you with more information. Got it? Got it. All right. Our next one. I am so sorry. I'm not going to drink your water, Pastor, but can I have that tea? Sorry. Oh, water? No, it's green tea. Oh. Oh, well, that'd be fine, too. Oh, mercy. All right, small groups. Let me talk about small groups for just a moment. As you heard on Sunday, small groups are up and going, and we are going to finish the year out September through December with small groups. And let's talk about small groups for just a moment and why we do them, okay? So we believe here at Beyond Church that the church should grow larger, Amen. Uh, and, and you say, you want a big church? You betcha. We want a big church. Why is that? Because the mission to know him and to make him known, we're always, we're always wanting to reach. We're always wanting to snatch people out of the kingdom of darkness and bring them in to the kingdom of God. And, and we do this outside, uh, outside these four walls. Amen. And, and so once we do that, we want to bring them in so that they can be discipled. So, yeah, we want, to, we want a big church. And, and if you say, well, I'm sorry, I don't like a big church. I like a small church. Well, then we have to remind ourselves, aren't you glad that the church didn't close its doors before you came into it? Wow. Amen? Amen. But we also believe that the church should grow smaller at the same time it's growing larger. And we do that through small groups because we believe that a church is a family. Church is a community. Church is where we form uh, eternal relationships. And that is done by small groups. And if the Lord has called you to a church, which this is going to be a segue into starting point, uh, we believe with all of our heart what 1 Corinthians says that God, Jesus, Jesus has set the members in the body as it pleases him. What does that mean? That means that where we go to church isn't a matter of personal preference. Where we go to church is a matter of obedience to our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so we believe that every person is called to a local church. And we have designed starting point, say starting point. We've designed starting point to help you, give you as much information and understanding about Beyond Church as possible so that you can make a decision, take it before the Lord, and say, Father, is this the place that you have called me to connect to? And if it is the place, then we want to help you get connected to the life of the church. 
That is what Starting Point is all about. Now, we have recently revamped Starting Point, and if you're sitting out there and you say, hey, I'm, I've been through Starting Point, but listen, there's a lot of people that haven't been, and you need to know how to help them. You need to know how to help them connect. And so on our website where Starting Point is concerned, you can go to the home page and you can click on the graphic that says Starting Point and it's going to take you through the steps. Or you can also go to at the top of our home page where it says About and go to Starting Point. And what we have done, there are videos there. You're going to, you're going to hear Pastor Nate talk about our structure, going to talk about what we believe, our doctrinal beliefs. And so anybody at any time can hop on our website and learn these things about Beyond Church. It's amazing. There, there's a videos on there from Pastor Austin. There's a video on the, about youth. Uh, Pastor Sheena about children's. There's a video on there. Landon, Landon, whoo, sorry, bud. Landon introduces the starting point uh, process. And then there's a section on there where Pastor talks about uh, in Christ. He talks about the Holy Spirit. He talks about what we believe and the word that we teach around here. It's good stuff. And I encourage you, even if you've been through Starting Point already, hop on there and go through it. It will bless you and it will help you help others uh, to know how to get connected. All right. So that is the, first, the, the introductory part of Starting Point is online. And then the final session, uh, the final step of Starting Point is our in-line, uh, I said in-line, sorry, our in-person um, gathering, Welcome to the Family. So we believe by the time that you get to that last part that, that the Lord has at, had opportunity to speak to your heart as to whether this would be the place that God would have you connect. And then we want to meet together with you. And, and it is. You're joining a family. You're joining a family whose mission is to know him and to make him known. And we want to do everything within our power, again, to help you get connected to the flow of life that's in the body that he's called you to. Amen. Does that make sense? So our, our next in-person uh, meeting, which is the welcome to the family part of Starting Point, is Sunday, September the 11th. And uh, it's right after church, uh, our Sunday morning service. And you can sign up for that uh, on, online on the Starting Point page. You got it? All right. Amen. Uh, all right, that's it for our announcements, and we're going to receive our tithes and offerings now, so if you want to get those ready. And I just want to read, I'm just going to read a scripture, and we're going to pray. What are you looking at? No. Uh, we're going to read Psalms, one, uh, Psalms 103. Oh, one of my, just one of the, one of my, yeah, I hesitate to say favorite, but this is a scripture that feeds me a lot. And it says, bless the Lord, O my soul. How many of you have, have heard this psalm? In, uh, in the Amplified, uh, it reads, bless means to gratefully praise. I gratefully praise you, O Lord. And then we're going to be a doer of the word in verse 2, where it tells us to not forget one, not one of his benefits. This is being a doer of the word, not just being a hearer of the word. But he instructs us, we're going to bless the Lord, and we're not going to forget not one of his benefits. Amen. <clears throat> Who forgives all of our iniquities. How many? Who heals all of our diseases. How many? Who delivers our life from destruction. Who crowns our lives with loving kindness. Loving kindness. When you see those words in the Old Testament, it's talking about a covenant. Loving kindness. A blood covenant. Uh, Pastor talked about on Sunday. Covenant loyalties. He crowns your life with covenant loyalties. Isn't that something? Thank you, Lord. And tender mercies. And he satisfies my mouth with good things. What does he satisfy our mouth with? 
good things. He satisfies our mouth with the Word of God. The Word of God, which teaches us that words are things. Words are things. Words are spirit and life. God's words are spirit and life. And He satisfies our mouth with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. You want your youth renewed like the eagles? Then let's, let, let's get God's word coming out of our mouth. Amen? He satisfies my life with good things. He satisfies my mouth with good things. Hallelujah. And he renews my youth like the eagles. We should talk different. Amen? We should talk different. We, 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 God's people should talk different and should look different. And, and, and the talking of, you know, as people get older and, and, and you make funny comments, you hear funny comments, you know, it just stinks getting older. Oh, you know, this, this arthritis, you know, and, and we just can't, can't do. And, oh, my gosh, you know how the mind, the mind just goes. The, as we get older, the mind just goes. Doesn't it sound ridiculous for that to be coming out of my mouth? Where in God's word does it say that? Where in God's word does it say to expect arthritis to sit in? Where does it say that you should expect your mind to diminish as you get older? He satisfies our mouth with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. Hallelujah. Father, we magnify you tonight. We're so grateful to be in your, uh, in your house. And as we uh, position our heart and our expectation to receive your word, we just say thank you, Father, for words of life. Thank you for words of life coming forth. Thank you for answers coming forth tonight. And we boldly declare that in this house and in our households, that we will not be hearers only of the word, but we will be doers of the word. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. would say good morning, but it's Wednesday night. <laughs> lucky me, lucky me. Um, we're going to jump right into the Word tonight. Um, just so much good things, being, being in, gathered together in the house of the Lord. I'm gonna, we're just, uh, I know we've already prayed, but I just thank the Lord tonight. Father, thank you. We just say thank you tonight for ministering to us your Word. Exactly where we need it, exactly how we need to hear it. Father, thank you, and I just thank you for tonight that there would be hope ministered in Jesus' name. Amen. So uh, that's what I'm going to minister on tonight. I'm just going to talk to you about um, get your hopes up. Get your hopes up. And uh, this has been something that it seems like uh, has just been rolling around on the inside of me um, for a little while. And uh, can you take these keys, too? Um, maybe I'm, I'm just going to be just real... Uh, Self with you. How did I say that? Just real normal, just just real chill. This is a this is a Wednesday night. Um, I think Wednesday nights are are powerful times because you have people that are middle of the week saying, "I I just want to get a little bit more." It's kind of like those guys that would uh, maybe stay a little bit after to shoot a little bit more. You know, we do these things in sports where we we we, we encourage kids to come to that those practices and get extra reps in. Uh, so that they can be better, they can grow, so that they can, you know, when the pressure's on, they make the shot, right? Their legs aren't tired. They put those extra reps in. And, uh, and it's the same way spiritually. And so really Wednesday night is, uh, it's, it's just a, it's a time of growth. It's a time of us sitting before the Word and saying, I need, I want to hear more. I want Lord teach me. I want another rep because I realize that my equipping and the knowledge and, and uh, the understanding and the encounters that I have with Him are not just about my goosebumps, but it's about others' destinies or eternity, right? 
Uh, and so it's important that, that I, that I would, would really know Christ so that I could make him known. And so that's really what tonight, it, tonight's about. And even more starting points concerned, um, I had felt in my heart pretty strong that we needed to get this uh, just starting point, just a, a clear picture of, um, of what it looks like to, you know, when we don't have a membership here at Beyond Church. Um, the best way we would say it this, we have a partnership. People play a part. I don't believe God ever has a membership. It's not, this is not a yacht club. This is not a, um, this is not a country club. I know they don't really have those so much anymore. But you don't just sign up and say, oh, but yeah, I'm a member there. Um, I know I play a part. Uh, there's, there's, there's life. The Bible talks about how if, if, a, if a branch isn't bearing fruit, it's actually pruned. So for you and I to be a member that has no fruit and we don't, uh, as, as a pastor, we don't uh, talk to you with, with the truth about it's God's desire that you would bear fruit, right? Then we're, in a sense, we're duping you or um, we are, we're, we're not giving you accurate information. We're deceiving you. And the church should be presenting light, not darkness, right? And so we talk about partnership. But anyway, why, why was starting point to me such an important thing? A couple things, because I wanted people to have, the, in a sense, a fast track when they come in to just say, is this the place? Maybe a little bit more information, but also a portion on there that no matter where they go, there would be some truths deposited into them to find the place that God sets them and get into that place. Because the time uh, which we live on this earth, it's short. Um, and, and it's important, that, and I believe that, you know, the Bible talks about how uh, as, as, as a time is compressed, and it's just like a river, if, if the walls are narrower, the rapids are faster, right? Or the water flows faster where it's, com- where it's, you know, compressed. And so I believe that's what's happening now. And I believe God's wanting to, you know, pay wages uh, like people that were came at 8 o'clock and people that came at noon and people that came at 5 o'clock because that's the goodness of God. And so that's what that's about. And also what that's about, and I'll just give you... Um, some things in my heart that I, I probably uh, withheld for a while, maybe maybe a few a few too too long, maybe you wouldn't even say withheld, but maybe just put on the shelf. Have you ever had a thing that God has said to you, um, and you just put it on the shelf for too long? You just because you haven't seen it, you haven't blah 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 blah, or maybe it just seems like it's too far off, or maybe it seems like it's too hard, or maybe you just seems it's too hard, or you don't know how, right? And so you're like, uh, uh, that word, it's just kind of like, rather than, um, like the Bible tells us in Timothy, put, you know, uh, take these words that were spoken to you, and by them you might wage a good warfare. Good warfare is one that takes ground. So rather than taking ground concerning the words of God, you don't keep them before you, you just shelf them, and therefore uh, you, they kind of lose sight, out of sight, out of mind, out of sight, out of mind, out of heart, right? Um, and a lot of times we do that because... Uh, and I'm going to use this, this, this statement that just came from a message I was listening to because we don't want to live by faith. Because living by faith is a fight. And, you know, we, everything we do in life, we do it to make it easy. We do. We like, we like, we don't want to fight the fight of faith. I'm not going to, ha- this is not a, this is not a condemnation message whatsoever, but I don't want to a lot of times fight the fight of faith. I want to take a Tylenol. Because I can solve that myself. Anything I can solve myself, I don't need God on. I'll only call him on the big things. When there's no other way for me. And there's so many promises of God. The Bible tells us that it's by faith, right? It's by faith. It's, in other words, taking him at his word. But what, to fight the good fight of faith, I got this wrapper that I pulled out of my pocket from my cup. Sorry about that. Um, you know why I picked that up? Because I'm proud of this place. In my heart, I, I, I love this house, God's house. Whether I'm in the parking lot or in the pews, if I see a rapper, I pick it up. Because this is, I'm a partner here. This is, this is, I'm not just a leader here, I'm a, I'm a part, you know. And um, anyway, but I, I just believe God's wanting uh, to, um, for you and me to, to live by his words. Um, but in order to live by his words, hope must be. And we're going to talk about hope tonight. And um, because if you lose hope, and we're going to get to there, you, it doesn't matter how much of God's word that you hear if you don't believe his word. Hope is the expectation of good. Hope, I'm going to give you this, give you this verse, um, Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. And we're going to talk about how hope comes. Hope comes. 
And we're going to talk, uh, you know, the Bible tells us in Romans 10, 17, now faith comes by hearing the word and hearing the word of God. So faith comes by doing what? Hearing what? God's word, okay? How does hope come? How does hope come? Well, let's look at this verse, and I want to show you a couple other verses, uh, just one other verse. I'm just going to p- pull this together quickly tonight, and then we're going to talk about uh, talk about. Um, when God's word comes to you, that you would believe it. Because just like tonight, Mona was reading the offering verse Psalms 103, right? Talking about he satisfies me with good things. He does this, he does this, he does this. But maybe your experience, maybe what you have proved by your experience and your awareness, um, you've proved that, no, the mind does get weak. You've proved, because you've looked at this, 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 and this, you've proved that, no, you can expect to lose your eyesight. You've proved that things get harder. You've proved, you've proved some things. You've proved some things based on what, what you've seen and what you've experienced, and so your hope is, is based upon experience more than it is the love of God. And therefore, when the word of God comes, you can't, and it's a promise, you, don't, you can't even appropriate that promise because really there's no, you, you don't believe it because your experience or your hope is saying, yeah, I can't really hope for that. My expectation of good, that's what hope is, a confident expectation of good, it's a future thing, right? Is you don't have expectation of good. You have expectation of losing your mind. You have expectation of not being able to walk. You have expectation of being having back problems or knee problems because of what has happened because of your experience. Now, hope, this is so cool. Did you know hope? Hey, this is so crazy. In today's day and age, I want, I want you to think about um, expectation of good. Expectation of good. We are in an in a, in a era of time where knowledge is so, uh, is so exalted. Not only exalted, it has increased that people know a lot, or so they think. And so they know so much, and they have so much history, and or they have so much uh, information, whether it's the weather for the last 20 or 40, 60 years, whatever. Oh, we're having the worst we have global warming because look at, we were the warmest time ever. Well, it only goes back this far, but you know what I'm saying. There's all this information so you think you know. And so what happens is, is people know some things and they get cynical, even in the church. The church can be very, very cynical, just like the world. Here is a picture or an expectation of good, a hope. And it says that hope, hope does not disappoint or does not put to shame, one translation says. Have you ever felt shamed because you hoped? You know what I'm saying? Like, like you're going to the doctor, right? And, and let's say you had a bad report, but you came to church and, 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 and the word of God, and you know God loves you. Right, and you hear you experience the love of God uh, like you hadn't in in a long time. Like just it was just He was um, birthing it to you, like revelation. Like what was read, there was more that was heard than what was read. I heard from God. He touched my heart. He loves me. He loves me. He loves me. And because He loves me, I know He will. And so I come down because the Lord is drawing my heart to come down and lay hands on, get hands laid on, or or to tell somebody and say, "Would you agree with me in prayer?" And so you do. And then uh, and then you go to the doctor and you say, "Well, I'm just believing." Right? And then a doc might say, or your friend might say, you know, Travis, <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, yeah, okay, whatever, bud. Well, you know, after you get back, I'll just be praying for your good recovery if you need anything. You know, can you believe he believes that garbage? You know what I'm talking about. Have you ever felt shame for hoping? For like having a hope and expectation of good? That we're not supposed to be shamed for hoping. The church should hope. We should have hope that, the, that, the, that his church would grow to a level that we, we, we can't even imagine. 
that people would, when we come together and to meet, when he says in his word, where two or more are gathered in his name, there he is in our midst. And so when we come together, like as it was in the Old Testament, the tent of meeting, the cloud of his glory and the fire of his presence would be in the place of meeting, especially since there is no veil because Christ has has removed the veil, he has paid the price, and God is dealing with us from, from the mercy seat because the blood of Jesus has been applied there. And so there is no judgment because, because judgment has been made, no judgment of your sins because judgment has already been made of sin by the blood of Jesus Christ. So when we come together, we should expect and we should have hope that we meet with the King of kings, the Lord of lords, whose ability is great and mighty, but his love for us and his goodness for us and his character, his character, who he is, he is love, and he is love. And if love is present, if you would do it for your kids, would he do it for his kids? Well, yeah, I just don't know. Don't get your hopes up. We're supposed to get our hopes up. We're supposed to get our hopes up because if we don't have hopes, if we don't have hopes, faith has nothing to put substance to. You, 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 faith is the substance of things hoped for. You, you and I won't even receive the word of God like, yeah, I believe that, and therefore I speak that. The most basic exercise of faith is I believe and I speak. But we don't want to live by faith because so often we're disappointed. We're living a life of disappointment. We're hopeless because our awareness, and I wrote this down. um, I said, uh, (laughs) when my awareness causes me to hope less, I better check where I'm getting my information. The God of all. Hmm, let's look, well, why don't we? Why don't we? Why don't we look at look at the God of all hope? How He will keep you in believing. The God of all hope. Well, let's not go there. Let's let's let's, let's keep going here. So let's go back to Romans chapter five five. And and, and as we're as you're pulling that up here. Um, I want to even just talk, speak to you, you know, again, about starting point and all those kind of things. In my heart, there was things, um, <laughs> you know, it's just so crazy. Uh, you, you might know me from a, a, a long time back. You might not. Um, you might know me for five years or whatever. But um, I moved here to Alma, Arkansas uh, when I was 21 years old, or 20 years old, rather. Uh, went to Bible school, got married right out of high school, went to Bible school with my wife, I was a year older than her, so I worked, saved some money, went to Bible school. We knew in our heart we weren't coming back to where we were from. We we, we knew that. We told our parents, we're not coming back. We know that the Lord's not leading us back here. We already have that, so don't expect us to come back. And so um, we went to Bible school, and then um, in a service, one one service, I was sitting right over here, and there was a guest minister by the name of Gary Batt, and he was speaking of some things, and it was, was one of the most amazing services I've ever been a, par, a part of, not because of what he said to me in the moment, but because even when he was talking, he was talking about some things that was bearing witness in my heart so clear, and I was seeing some pictures that were so clear. And there were statements that were made about this church being on a place over here by the interstate, which is I-49 now, which was once 540, right? Is that, is that right? 49, it is 49, yeah. Um, it just had been put in, because this has been... It's been a number of years that I've been here. We celebrated 20 years of marriage. Just this last, so it's been like, we've been here like 18 years, right? Crazy to think that long. And he was speaking, and, and I'm sitting over there, and, and he stops in the middle of his message. Never met this guy before. The pastor never had met this guy before. He was scheduled by a board. I guess he had spoken before. And he stops, and he says, what's your name, son? And uh, I was like, uh, Nate. You know, kind of awkward, you know, middle of a Wednesday night, just like this. You can expect to hear from God on a Wednesday night, just like this. Life altering, change your life forever, change you, put some hope, put some steps, order your steps, set you on a course, right? Give you some, give you the exact thing you need. And he says, um, the Lord wants me to tell you that the time is now and the place is here. 
And he turns, he's, on, he's down here on the floor. You got to understand we had car, floral carpet and, and we were about, we, it, it, was, it, was, it was great, okay? It really was. It is great. You could, listen, it could be in a, a dirt floor and bamboo walls, right? And God shows up, it's great. That's it. And, uh, and so, boom, and he turns to walk away and he says, another thing your wife does hear from the Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord, for that one. <laughs> and uh, we had been arguing, not arguing, but just really wanting to get it right. Losing sleep, all, you know, in a sense, just about moving here or not moving here. And her parents had taken the church. And so I told my parents that we weren't going to be coming back. Well, now her parents are here, and I don't want to follow parents. So huge deal. Anyway, long story short, to get back to the message here, um, I'd seen some things in my heart that night, some words that were spoken, and uh, moved over here and just started serving. That's what I want to do. I really didn't ever intend to pastor a church, didn't desire really to pastor a church, had no desire to. Started a business. The Lord blessed our business. We were very blessed, uh, financially sound. Um, and then the Lord's like, hey, what do you want to do? Like, I started getting commercial accounts, like big commercial accounts, and like money was really good, really good. And I remember hearing that call, and I was like, oh. But he asked me, what do you want to do? And I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to do what he wanted me to do because there was fulfillment there. And so, so I did. And I said, okay. I turned in some papers, said no to the Target and the Best Buy. I had the bid on all that, prom, uh, not the promenade, but all the Fort Smith Pavilion. I was going to be the painter there. And uh, things got tough that, that year. That was when everything kind of crashed. Back in 08, maybe was it? The business, uh, Northridge was going on, which if you know where Northridge is, that was booming. Housing market was booming. Pinnock was just starting, just started. But everything just went, you know. Um, and so that there was about a six-month window. It seemed kind of tight. Maybe I miss God. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You ever miss God or because of the conditions? Because of your awareness. Yeah. So then your hope, your awareness is causing you to hope less. Instead of putting your trust on what God's saying. Um, but in that time of, of what was seemed like famine, it seemed like the Lord was just putting in, into me a vision of seeing um, things increase. But it was different than increasing business. It changed from increasing business to increasing his church. With no desire of hey, look at me, with a complete desire of let's see how many people, like not let's see how many people, but let's, let's see how many people can, can come to Christ because it's God's will that all men would be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. Now, I just said that scripture, and you would might say because of your awareness, well, that's not possible. But God said... God said in his word, it's his desire that all men would come to the knowledge of the truth. So let's see all. Yeah. Right? Like, why not let's see all? Because I once was lost and not, in my mind, worthy of being, not only, let alone used, but just I, I just, I just knew what I wasn't. Right? I knew all that I was and all that I wasn't. And yet God found me. And he reached down with his love and he said, he called me. And it's like, that's what I want to others to hear. And that's the love of God. So let's do that. And I'm talking about hope tonight. So hang with me. And in that moment, my hope was, let's see it. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's go tell people about Jesus on a level that, that is not familiar with to the church and not just this box of a church. Let's be a church that's outside of its walls. Let's be beyond church. Let's get out beyond the four walls. Let's go out into our community. Let's be a church in the community until every person knows Christ is plugged into the church, not just this church, the church, 
and that we have this, this, this place called Alma that looks like heaven on earth. And I say that because I had this encounter, or this, not this encounter, but this, this friend, um, his name was Manuel Sanchez, and he was a painter that I uh, had met and started training him and got him started on his own, his own business, and we were great friends and all this kind of stuff. So cool, just a precious, precious guy. And we were actually painting, doing some remodeling in the church early on, and he got born again in church, um, Monica Fletcher. Uh, she used to go to church here. They've moved since to Arizona years and years back, um, but she spoke Spanish. She was Hispanic, uh, and, and so he was in there painting, and she said something in Spanish to him, you know, and I was like, no habla espanol, taco burrito, um, <laughs> but I learned some stuff to communicate, but uh, she asked him something, Cristo, blah, 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 said about it, you know, like, I'm like, okay, and then he goes, he comes up and he hits me, he goes, what, you don't want me to go to heaven? <laughs> you never told me? And that was early on, and he said, uh, uh, that was early on in our relationship. And I said, I just, I just didn't know you. I didn't, I, I didn't know how to do it yet because just the, he said, what? Come on, you know? Anyway, and, uh, but we were really good friends, and um, he, he loved my family. We loved each other, and uh, he said, you know, you know, he came from Salvador, and he said uh, that the name of Alma means in, in every, you know, how many of you know, like, Spanish is kind of like English, in, even more so, but like different places speak Spanish and they use different terms. Yeah. Well, Alma, Alma, to him, uh, it, from his place, it means my heaven. Wow. That's what it means, heaven. It means heaven. And so, and I remember him saying that, and he told me, he said, it's like heaven. It's like, this is my heaven. He came from L.A. He had one of his legs. He always wore pants because one of his legs had been shot in a gunfight as a, he was in gangs uh, growing up in, in L.A. He, was, uh, he wasn't legal. He was illegal, but he was, came in as a kid. Uh, and so then he moved here to get away from that. His mom moved him after things were, you know, he'd been shot, all that kind of crazy stuff. Everyone was trying to kill him. You know, here he is, really cool kid, you know, great guy. And here he's now driving a truck of his own, he has a business. He's got a couple of kids. He just got born again, experienced the love of God. This is like my, my Alma, my Alma, me, my heaven. It's like I moved to heaven. And I remember him saying that, and I remember pondering that in my heart. Why can't we have heaven on earth? Why can't you have what the word says? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Hmm. He told us to pray that. You know, our prayers should be feisty instead of reserved. When you're filled with hope, there's a feistiness about your prayers. Amen. You know, like, let's get it. Why? Because, because you trust in something. And that's the character of God. Let's put back up Romans 5.5. Romans, uh, five. See, so, um, and then we're going we're gonna to get there tonight. All right. So Romans uh, 5.5, 5. now hope does not disappoint. You shouldn't be disappointed. You shouldn't be put to shame if you hope. Matter of fact, you sh- God loves when you hope. Because hope has a foundation. It came from character, the character of God. Let's, let's look here and we'll, we'll build this out. Because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Next, next verse. Oh, I didn't give it to you. Let me, let me jump over here. Um, let me see here. Uh, da, da, da. I only gave you that one for hope does not disappoint. Let me hold on one sec. Give you this verse. <laughs> Romans uh, verse 4, excuse me, 5, 4. All right. 5, 4. Okay, let's go one back, 3, 4, 5. I, I guess I could read all of Romans 5 because it wasn't on my notes perfectly anyway. So let's go Romans 5, 1 through 5, and you guys can hang with me here. Therefore, having been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We're, we have peace with God because of Jesus Christ, which is a re- given because God loves us. So we, we see this character of God already on display right here. All right. Through him, he didn't just save us. 
He, gave a, he didn't say, well, I'm going to save you, but you're kind of stinky. I don't want you to die. But instead, he brought us into the house. He gave us access by faith into his grace, into his empowerment, into what his love would empower us to have, in which we stand and, re, and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So we, we, we should, we, there, should, there should be joy. And in the church, there's a lot less joy than there should be. You know why? Because there's a lot more hopelessness than there should be. Why? Because there's a whole lot more awareness based upon information and our experiences and what it looks like versus what it, God said and what God has shown us to be true. What God has shown us to be true. There should be a rejoicing in the hope, expectation of good, of the glory or the goodness of God. God wants to be good to you. I should expect, as I've already seen, he, he came and he made a way when there was no way. I've seen the character of God and I'm seeing that he, and there should be a, a joy in hope. But there's, if you don't have joy, let me just tell you why you don't have joy. You don't have hope. If you're not real happy, you don't have hope. You can't see, hope is a vision thing. You can't see how. You, or you've stopped seeing when, or what you've said, if you've said, you've said this, you've said this, I thought he would, instead of, I know he does. I thought he would by now. There's songs out there. I thought you would do this by now, God. I thought you would do this by now, God. I'm wondering when you're going to come through, God. God, I thought you would, instead of, I know he does. Hope says, I know he loves me. This is, this, uh, let's see, any kids in here tonight? Too young? Okay. Well, this is not too young. All right. So there's, no, there's some kids that are younger. All right. But we're going to talk about marriage here for just a second. Um, and so I'll just be a little more like high level. You know, in marriage, there's something that you like. You may call it Charlie. Call it whatever you want to call it. You call it Whoopi. You call it whatever, right? Okay. And, you know, sometimes... You give the subliminal signals. I don't know. I was trying to think of that word that somebody used on stage that one time. And I, maybe, was it Charlie? I don't know what it was. All right. But anyway, I would normally, okay. So sometimes, sometimes, guys, have you ever tried to give the signal? You know, like, you know, the signal, you know. Whatever. Come on, help me out. Some good. You know the signal, like, you know, you smell when I'm stepping in, right? And how many of you ever have found out that the, the, the lady is a little bit slower in smelling what you're stepping in? Oftentimes, you're like, dear Jesus, right? But not really necessarily that slow. But sometimes you think you communicated, and then, and then maybe what you communicated wasn't really communicated. Maybe you just said, maybe you just said, I'll cut your grass. And they're like, oh, cool. He's going to go mow the lawn. And you, and she's like, God, it's taken him a long time to get his, you know, mowing shorts on in that bedroom. Wait, there he is waiting for you, you know. You ever been there? And so there's miscommunication, right? And um, how many of you know sometimes in those miscommunication moments, there can be great frustration, irritation. But if you know, and, and that, that, that statement of the irritation is because you say this, I thought she would. I thought you would. I thought you would by now. I thought you, I thought you would. I thought you would. In, instead of. Instead of, I know you do. I know you love me. I, communication must not have been clear. You know what I'm saying? When you, when you and I move into that place of, of expectation, uh, and, and you and I say, I thought you would by this by now, what happens is, is we get turned, uh, in a sense, to be cynical, or we get turned to be, and, and even open the door, it's probably because 
I'm a little bit overweight, or it's probably because I'm not shaved clean, or it's probably because I didn't fix my hair, it's probably because I smell, it's probably because they're talking to the boss at work, it's probably because, how many of you know, when you and I, instead of, I know they do, I know, I know he loves me, and I, instead of knowing that God loves me, and I start grading, basically saying, I thought you would by now, I'm, I'm talking about a performance more than a character. I'm talking about performance more than character. I know my wife loves me. I know I've experienced it. 20 years I've experienced her love for me. I've experienced her love for me when I was a complete stinker and probably said words that I shouldn't have said. I know I said words I shouldn't have said. No, I, no, I didn't. I, I got upset. I threw a hamburger or whatever it might be. I, you might not know that story either. That's a long time ago. <laughs> Real things. You know, she stood by my side in those moments. Character. But when I start looking at performance instead of character, I begin to question who they are. And when I begin to question who they are, the enemy can give me any word, though it's completely unreasonable. Oh, it's probably because blah, 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 blah. You saw what happened at staff meeting. Or you saw blah, 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 blah. I mean, it, I'm just trying to think, like, what could be what, what, so unreasonable? But it makes sense. Your awareness somehow is heightened and keen. But it, yet it causes you and I to hope less and not expect good. So you know what you don't do? You don't expect to come in there tomorrow night or to later that night and say, hey, and give her the smile. You know, or, hey, hey, I'll cut your grass. You don't expect that. You think, so, you, so a lot of times when you have those moments of frustration and, and you thought I would or you would, blah, 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 if it doesn't end in a fight and then you end up making up or something like that, um, it could, you might, we're hoping you'd hit, be able to be together maybe that night and the next day, maybe the next day coming into a long weekend, whatever. You might go the whole weekend without being together. Is this accurate? It's accurate. It works the same way with our with our husband as the bride of Christ. Works the exact same way. When we start grading what he hasn't done, we begin to lose hope in his, and we begin to lose uh, a trust in his character. Let's go back to this verse and we're going to roll through this. Because I want, I want, what I'm talking about, uh, oh shoot, um, 8, 10. Well, I, we're going to get to just this piece because I, I really want to leave you tonight, I really minister hope, that hope would rise and build in your hearts, okay? Because there's a way for hope to build in your heart. All right, so through him we have access by faith, rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. All right, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulations. Get happy in tribulations, knowing that the tribulations produces perseverance. And perseverance produces character, and character hope. Now, this word character, if you were to look up this word in the Greek, you would see that this word is talking about authenticity. Character, the character of somebody is who they really are. It's not just what they do when no one's looking. It's actually who they are. And the picture of this word character, it would be like if you were going to buy something from someone for a large sum of money, and you have this, bring this chest of gold coins they go, oh, cool, thank you, you know. No, they take it and they go, hmm, is this really gold? But they don't just bite one. They grab a few of them and they melt it down to find out, is this pure gold or is this plated gold? Is it really authentic, right? And so what happens is perseverance, per, or excuse me, tri tribulations allow a perseverance and the proving what you really believe. And when you really believe God is good, when you really believe he loves you, when you really believe he does, he loves me. I really know she loves me. I know she loves me. I, know, I, I stop grading what somebody does because I know who they are and I position myself to, to, to communicate clearly or to ask big, hey, you know, I was thinking instead of giving the signal, hey, how about we get together tonight? 
No, no, no I'm, not, I'm not cutting up. Here I am in church asking tonight. <laughs> On the spot. Hey, you love your kids. You know how to give good gifts to your children. If they ask for a bread, do you give them a stone? If they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? No, how much more will your father give good gifts to those who ask? Because you know who they are, you now have the, 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 the strength of heart. You're not losing heart. You have strength of heart. You have hope to ask boldly and say, hey, how about this? How about this? God, what about this? Hey, how about this? You know, our prayers should be feisty. When we see something that's not heaven on earth, whether it's somebody not, in, not, not knowing Christ, somebody not experiencing the life that he purchased through his promise and Jesus on the cross, if it's sickness, if it's whatever it might be, that we would go about doing good, healing all. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel, that I would declare boldly, preach, declare, make openly known the goodness of God, because I know who he is. I know he loves me. I know he loves me. I know he loves me. I know his character, and character, knowing the character produces hope. Next verse, verse 5. Let's go, so perseverance character. Now hope, when you have hope, you're not disappointed, And you know what? You can't be shamed. Because the love of God has been poured out in your hearts by the Holy Spirit who has given to us. So you know what I want to just talk to you about tonight? To try to, because this is a whole lot more than this. Fill up on the love of God. Fill up on, fill up on the love of God. Uh, let's go just to the other verse, and I'm going to give you this analogy. that I, I'm an analogy guy. Let's see here. Let's go to Romans 15.4. I'm, I'm an analogy guy. Uh, I just, I, I don't know why. I just think that way because sometimes you're trying to say something and an example maybe speaks clear. Jesus did that. Matter of fact, the Bible says, well, we're not going to go there. Well, yeah, I'm going to go there just for a sec. You know, um, the Bible talks about how faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. Did you know that Jesus told the disciples that having heard that you might hear? He's talking about how I told you a parable that having heard the parable you might hear. And having seen you might see. In other words, I'm speak, God speaks many times to us with words or with a parable. But, ooh, thank you, Jesus. Oops. It was time. Hey, I can't pick that up, so don't worry about it. Just kidding. All right. Um, <laughs> But he, he speaks to us oftentimes with words, but that's not what he said. He didn't just say, you know, the parable of the sower. He didn't just say, blah, blah, blah. You know, he, say, he was saying more. Having heard, you heard. In other words, the revelation knowledge comes when you open the word of God. He speaks to you more than what, what was spoken. That's what analogies do. That's what parables do. They speak more than what's spoken. But he says this, and this is talking about filling up with the love of God. It says, for everything that was written in the past was written to teach us. Think about this. All of this Bible. You know what that's for? It's just boring. I just, it's hard for me to read this. It's hard to blah, blah, blah. Just, I get so distracted. You want to know God? You want to prove who he is? You want to know his character? Well, everything that's written in there was written to teach you and to show you what, who he is, who he was, and how he wants to be. When you look at before the law, how he dealt with Abraham, how he dealt with, he walked with Enoch. He'd be riddled to be this one. Enoch walked with God and he was no more. And that was before there was the blood sacrifice. You riddled me this one. How did God go and, and talk with Cain and Abel when sin had already entered the garden? Riddled me that one. God, want, God never wanted a law for, for, for the people. He wanted to meet with them still. I'm going to come down, get yourself ready. Don't touch this mountain. No, 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 you just tell us what to do. 
I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it just, you, you just have to look. You, you see the character of God. You begin to see, and you see that everything that was written in times past will teach you. So you begin to look, and then you say, well, I, I need to know who God is. So I can look at the Old Testament and types and shadows, or I can just for simplicity right now know that if I've seen Jesus, I've seen the Father, and I can look at Jesus, and he came to display the Father. And so when I look and I see a woman at the well, I've seen Jesus. And so it was written to teach me how God wants to respond to others. When I see that when somebody cried out to him, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on me, I see that he had mercy and kindness and covenant loyalty to people covenant just boom boom wow he went about doing this he he went to his hometown to do something there you see the goodness of god you see this character and you begin to prove who he is because you see who what he's done so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and encouragement they might provide you with what holy cow isn't that exactly what we just read in romans chapter 5 verse 4 that hope comes from character or from proving the truth. So you and I can have hope when you understand you understand who someone's character is. So let's say just even in our house, if you came over to our house and I didn't say, I didn't say we're going to eat tonight, but you're coming over around dinner time and you might be hungry, you might have hope because you know that you know, you're coming to my house, I like to eat. We're probably going to have food, or if you're hungry, I'm going to, hey, hey, you need something to drink, you want something to eat, I got this. Even if I got to whip something together, you got some hope. You got some hope that you're probably going to eat something, he's going to have something around, try something new, whatever it might be, you're going to you have, you have hope. You don't have faith, but you do have hope. If you know me, if you've been around me, we talk about food, I'll ask kids and they come over, what's your favorite food? Why? I don't know. I just like to know. I just like food, too. When, when I was a baby... I would cry until I heard the microwave beep because I knew my bottle was ready. <laughs> Straight up. 101 Dalmatians, I'm hungry, mother. I really am. Canine Krispies, I was the one in front of the TV. That was me. Okay, I, I, I got all of my, my siblings by at least 80 pounds, 75 to 80 pounds, all right, because I liked food. So you would know that I know the character of Nate. He wants to grill something, he wants to smoke something, he wants to cook something, he wants to grow something, you know, and I'm going to have some, I have a hope, but you don't have faith. But if I said, hey, uh, come on over, we're going to, I want to throw, have you try some uh, steak tonight. Now you have faith. Why? Because you know my character, and now you've got my word. I, you can sit here all you want, and you're joyless. Because your awareness, your awareness of all the things that have happened, all the, and the word of God, and his word is coming forth, and there's promises in his word, and his provision for you, but you can't receive it. You're cynical about it. Yeah, too good to be true. No, remember that song? You're too good to not believe. Too good to not believe. He's too good to not believe. Too good to not believe. All of these things that are written before, you'll find that not only do they produce faith, but they show us this picture of his character, and that is one of hope. Now, here's this analogy. We're going to close with this. You ever been there where maybe you're right now facing a wall? Maybe you're facing something that you can't get over. Maybe, you, you, you know, and you look, look around, and it's like too big. It's just, uh, it's like a damn wall, right? And I thought that was kind of funny, so I said it. Um, I was thinking about another pastor that was told that joke, and then he, he got the other person. Anyway, it's a long story, probably not from stage story, but um, I, he, he was, I thought it was pretty good. But I'm not talking with the cuss word. I'm talking a, a damn wall, okay? And so I, there's this analogy of, of this wall or this wall dam. I don't, I, maybe I'll just say damn wall. Um, <laughs> when, there, when, there is a, when there's a dam, you can't. You can, and I want you to think of the Arkansas River. Maybe you understand a lock system. A lock. See, a lock and a dam. A lock and a dam. See, a dam without a lock is impenetrable, in a sense, impenetrable by a boat. By this vessel that's supposed to go upriver. But because the dam is there, and again, dams are, a lock and dams are to raise the water level on one side so that they can stay navigable the whole time. 
That's why dam dams are there. They raise the water level on the backside, and it's lower. It steps down instead of rapids. So now these boats can step up and step up. All right. This is how this is locks and locks and dams. If you don't know, so what happens is you see this. You come into you came to a wall. It's impenetrable. Impenetrable unless unless you get into this space called the lock, and the wall closes behind you, and you might be in that place where it seems like you look forward and you can't just turn back and you just, on every side, you're just locked in. Just locked in. So what, do you, what now? How are you going to get over it? It's impossible. You're right. Unless it begins to fill. Unless it begins to fill with water. When it begins to fill with water, what happens is that lock, that container, the container of your heart, the love of God has been shed abroad in your heart. So that you wouldn't be disappointed. So that you could come into a place of a, a, a wall, an a, a impenetrable thing, like a, like a damn wall. You can't get past that wall. But because God has given you a container, something that you could hide, locked away in your heart, his love, it could fill up. And you could fill up on his love and his character. And you could know that he loves you. And you could know that he loves you. And you could... Know that he loves you. And I want you just to see that, that no matter how big your problem, no matter how big the ship, no matter if it's, it's three football fields long, no matter how big, if it's like the St. Lawrence Seaway, no matter how big it is, that water, that love will lift that boat. It'll fill it up. And what was once impossible? And you were right. And your awareness was correct. You are exactly right. It's impossible. And it can't. Without the love of God. The love of God is what makes faith work. The love of God is what allows you and I, knowing the love of God, allows you and I to have hope. And to fill up on that will allow you and I to be lifted above the wall, above what's impenetrable. And you'll find that we lift up and all of a sudden, it seems like God made a way where there was no way. And this wall, this, this wall, this damn wall that once was a wall, all of a sudden opens to you. I, I wanted to show a lock and dam system. You might go look it up tonight, but it's just, it's just wild to, to look. And you, if you're in a ship or you're on the Arkansas River, lock and dam 13, if you ever go to fish the, you know, the pool over this way or you fish downstream, you can go through with a bass boat like a big barge. Whether your problem is this big, you don't have to solve it on your own. You can just say, thank you, Lord, that you love me. And Because you love me, how would you not freely give me all things? Father, thank you. You said in your word. So now I can not only have hope, but I can have faith because I find a promise because I know he loves me. And then I can ask, and you know what I can do? I, I'm not disappointed because perseverance is, I know he loves me and I know I have his word. So whether you come to my house and we're supposed to eat at six and you get there and I'm still warming up the grill, you don't have to worry, it's coming. It's coming. Let's fill up on the love of God. He loves you. He loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus. That wows me still. Let's not move from the place of wow. God, you love me. Do you remember what he's done? Do you remember what he can do? Do you remember? Do you let's go over again? Go over again. That's what he tells us to do. To go over again his love for us. As I fill up on the love of God, no matter what it is. Hope will rise because he loves me. And I won't be saying I thought you would. I'll be saying I know he does. I know you do. Father, I know you do. I know you love me. I know you love my kids. I know you love them more than I do. And so I ask you, according to your word, according to your word, and you'll look and you'll begin to scour the word because you know his character, now you're just looking for his word. Tell me what you would do for me. Tell me what you would do for me. Tell me what you would do for me. 
Lord, I didn't see this in your word, but I know your character. Ask for anything according to my what? My will. Remember that scripture? Not just my word, but my will. His character. Lord, I don't, I don't see this. I know you're a good God. I know you're a God that loves me. I know you're a God that wants good things for me and has a, a hope and an ex- a future and an end. But I'm going to ask you for this, and I'm going to listen for a response. You know? But you pray according to his word, according to his will. But I'm telling you, there's something about just knowing his character and then getting his word. And then you know what you can do? You can stand that. So there's words. And so this is I'm back to this, this statement. I didn't even know I was going to do this tonight. But back to, and I'm, I'm, I'm done with this. There was words that were spoken to my heart by the Holy Spirit that night years ago. They weren't written in your book or your Bible. But God wrote them on my heart because that's where he speaks. So because I know his character, because I experienced his love, I put it to proof for myself. I can trust that word. So rather than put his word on the shelf that he spoke to me, I can put it before me and I can allow joy and confident expectation to cause my steps to be ordered instead of me trying to find a foot for something because I don't have his word when his word is to be a lamp and a light into my feet and and shine ahead of me the way I'm to go because he loves me he gives me his word I can trust him so let's fill up on the love of God let's look back at what he said Look, look how faithful he's been let's look what he's done and then let's let's face that wall. Let's face that thing that looks hard and just say, he loves me. And you'll find that you're lifted up. And those who wait, you see that that the thing about a lock and dam system, it doesn't, it's not instant. And those who wait upon the Lord, just wait. You know, you can cut up with your buddy in the bass boat while you're waiting. Won't be long. And the door will open. And he'll make a way where there was no way. Guys, this is the hope we got to have. This is the hope that, that people need to ask us about. What is this hope that you have? The church is to have a hope. The hope of the world, the light of the world, the hope of the world. That's us. Amen. Let me pray over you. Father, thank you so much for your word to us tonight. Thank you for this time together. Thank you for the words that you spoke to us. And thank you for your love. Your love. Let us know it by experience. Let us put it to proof for ourselves. We just say thank you tonight. Thank you for hope. I just pray over this people. Father, I ask you for hope to fill their hearts like never before. Let them hear again your love and your kindness and your faithfulness. Father, that your character, we would know and we'd say he does, he does, he does, he does. You do, you do, you do, you do. Father, you love us. And we say thank you because you love us. We pray, we pray and we ask big. We step big. We look like your children. And we just give you honor in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. You know, when, uh, when someone grows up in the house of, of a father that has more than enough, how many of you know people know who their kids are? They don't seem like they're limited. They don't seem like they can't. They don't, they think anything's possible for them. Listen, you're God's kids. Anything's possible for you. You're, you're God's kid. You're King's kids. You're King's kids. Amen? And that's what we're to carry into this world, a hope. Amen? God bless you tonight. We'll see you Sunday.